Okay, this video is on writing revenue and profit functions algebraically. So, um, number one says the demand function for an item is D of Q equals 180 minus 12 Q and its cost function is C of Q equals 225 plus 25 Q. And we need to write a revenue function and a profit function. So what we need to understand very uh, early on is that Q is my independent variable. So for this problem, Q, which stands for quantity, is the independent variable. And the thing to remember is that once you establish that Q is the independent variable here, um, you are going to make sure that Q is the independent variable for every equation you write. That's really important. So that makes P, and this is P right here, P stands for price and it's the dependent variable. So our ordered pairs would look like QP. Okay, so we want to write a revenue function. So we need to understand that revenue is price times quantity. And we want to build a function, so keeping in mind that Q is always going to be independent, it's going to be an R of Q function. So this function notation means that when I know the quantity, the independent variable, then I will know the revenue. Those are my two variables, quantity independent, revenue dependent. But here, you see I have R of Q equals P times Q. So this P can't be here. This P has to be gone. Everything has to be in terms of Q. So we're going to come up here and take this demand function. This demand function is P equals 180 minus 12Q. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this P with 180 minus 12Q. So that's going to give us an R of Q equals parentheses 180 minus 12Q times Q. And if we multiply this out and put it in descending order, it's going to give us negative 12Q squared plus 180Q. So that's our revenue function and it's got an independent variable of Q. Now we need to write a profit function. Same thing, we'll start, we have to know that profit is equal to revenue minus the cost. And we want Q to be independent, so we're going to build a P of Q function, which means that if I know the quantity, then I'll know the profit. And so I need a revenue function that's in terms of Q, and I have one. And I need a cost function that's in terms of Q. And in this case, we have a cost function in terms of Q. So we're going to substitute the revenue function in. Minus, and then parentheses are very important. 225 plus 25Q is my cost function. And the reason the parentheses are important is because you have to distribute the negative. So that's going to give us this function. And then we will combine like terms and put it in descending order. 180Q minus 25Q is positive 155Q. And so there's our profit function. And notice that this profit function is a quadratic function, so it's in the form of, parab of a parabola, and it opens down. So if we were to graph this, this is profit, the y-axis is profit, the x-axis is quantity, and we have a negative y-intercept, and this graph opens upside down. And so right here and right here, these are the spots where our break-even points occur. So this is where profit equals zero, here and here. So we can find the quantity where our break-even is going to happen, where our profit is going to be zero, and there are two. So to solve that algebraically, we could set this profit equation equal to zero because break even means when the profit is equal to zero. And you could use the quadratic formula, but we are going to use Excel. 
Okay, so now it's time to solve this problem with Excel. And so um, what you want to do to start with, again, it all begins with what is our independent variable. So in problem one, Q is independent. So that goes in column A. And then P, or price, goes along with Q, and it's the demand equation is a demand P. And then this column and this column are not necessarily necessary. I wanted to talk to you about uh, something important. So I'm going to go ahead and type in this revenue column and this cost column, and then we have a profit column. Okay, so we start by putting in the demand, the demand P, which is 180 minus 12 times Q. And then revenue, you could type in this negative 12 Q squared plus 180 Q, or you could use X Excel's ability to multiply columns, and we know that revenue is price times quantity. And then the cost function is given as 225 plus 25 times Q. And then the profit function, you could use Excel's ability to subtract uh, columns, so we could do revenue minus cost. And here's where I really need to explain something to you. Um, Excel will build a profit function and a revenue function just by clicking columns, but you have to know how to do this algebraically. You have to create this profit function algebraically. And the reason is because in Unit 2, we're going to learn how to take a derivative. And so Excel won't take a derivative. And you can't do what's in Chapter 2 without being able to take a derivative. So this is why you're learning how to do this algebraically. So in case you were wondering, why are we doing this algebraically when Excel is really smart and will do revenue minus cost? It's because you need to be able to take a derivative, and so you need to be able to build a function to do that. So I'm just going to type in the function that we created, and we can use this as an opportunity to see that revenue minus cost column is going to give you the same values as your profit function, and that sort of confirms your answer. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to come up with our domain, and it's normal to feel like I don't know what to let my domain be. So I'm going to um, count by fives, so zero to five. I'm going to drag all of these columns down once and then grab all five or six columns. And I want you to understand why I graphed this and why you have to understand what is going on and why, why this algebraic function is important. You see that it's a parabola that opens upside down. You see that it, the y values cross from negative to positive and then go from positive to negative. So when I'm trying to figure out my domain, I'm looking for that. And here I'm going from negative to positive. So I know a break even point occurs from 0 to 5. Um, and then here I'm going from positive to negative. So I know the second um, break even point happens somewhere between 10 and 15. But I've got all these negatives that aren't necessary. So this tells me that a domain from 0 to 15 would be great. So I'm just going to change and count by 1s and go to 15. And th the other thing I wanted to show you is um, how do you graph uh, the profit function. Well, we've got some columns here that are unnecessary. So I want to show you how you skip columns. What you're going to do, right now I'm not touching anything, and I'm going to click with my left mouse button and hold it down and select column A and let go. So I'm not click any nothing is clicked right now. Then I'm going to, with my left hand, hit the control button underneath the shift key on the left hand side, and just ho I'm holding it down right now. Then I'm going to move my mouse, and at profit I'm going to click the left mouse button and select profit. So the way you skip over columns is with the control key, but you have to understand when to let go of things or else it'll be a mess. So hopefully you'll be able to do that. And then we're going to insert our scatter and this is going to give our pretty profit function. The other thing I'm going to take a minute to tell you is that we want these x-axis and these y-axis labeled. I haven't been doing that for a time, but I'm going to show you right here that as soon as you create this scatter plot, this layout is underneath chart tools design chart layouts come up. You want layout 1 
and what that does is it gives you a chance to label your axes so I'm gonna click one click on the x-axis title and I don't have to double click and erase or anything once it's selected it knows you're gonna type in there and my x-axis independent variable is quantity and it types it in here when you hit enter it'll go to the x-axis and then click once on the y-axis and my dependent variable is profit because remember I'm graphing the profit function so now I can see my graph I can see my break-even points I also can see where they are approximately located if I look at this column so now I'm going to goal seek so I'm going to drag this down twice and I put some guess numbers in I'm going to guess 3 and I'm going to guess 12 because of I'm looking right here at this graph here so now I'm ready to goal seek so I'm going to click on the 132 go to data what if analysis goal seek I want break even point so I'm profit to go to 0 so put 0 there and then by changing my independent variable column A where 3 is and there's my first break even value let's do this again click on the negative 93 what if analysis goal seek profits going to 0 by changing cell A19 and again it doesn't exactly say 0 but it's a very very small value and Excel says this is good so my break-even points this is Q for quantity that's a uh, 1.67 items or 11.25 items would give me my break-even point and I like for you to give me both again if you need exact values you could use the quadratic formula to confirm these values